there's a strong possibility you've encountered MSG previously. Monosodium glutamate. Perhaps you've noticed it listed on the ingredients of an instant ramen package. Or perhaps you've been advised it's something to steer clear of in Asian cuisine. MSG has maintained a reputation that spans from a benign culinary ingredient to a chemical adversary blamed for migraines and lightheadedness. But here's the fundamental question. What precisely is MSG? And is it genuinely harmful for you? Or has it been unjustly vilified for generations? Today, let's unpack the authentic narrative of MSG, where it originated, what it contributes to food, and what scientific research actually reveals about its safety. Right here on Stories Behind Everything. Let's begin with the basics. MSG is shorthand for monosodium glutamate. It's essentially a flavor amplifier, a white crystalline powder that appears nearly identical to table salt or granulated sugar. Chemically, it comprises sodium and glutamic acid, which is a naturally occurring amino acid. That term glutamate might sound unfamiliar, but it's omnipresent in tomatoes, mushrooms, cheese, seaweed, even human breast milk. In reality, glutamate is one of the primary compounds responsible for the savory taste we call umami. That's the fifth fundamental taste alongside sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. So fundamentally, MSG is merely a concentrated version of something our taste receptors already recognize and appreciate. MSG's narrative begins in Japan during the early 20th century. A chemistry professor named Kikunai Ikeda was consuming a bowl of kombu seaweed broth when he realized the savory complexity of flavor wasn't explained by sweetness, saltiness, or bitterness. Intrigued, he commenced experimenting in his laboratory and succeeded in isolating the compound responsible, glutamate. He patented a method to produce it by extracting glutamic acid from seaweed and combining it with sodium, creating monosodium glutamate. In 1909, MSG reached the marketplace under the brand name Ajinomoto, which literally translates to essence of taste. It rapidly spread globally finding its way into kitchens and processed foods everywhere. So, why does MSG make food taste superior? It has everything to do with how our taste receptors perceive umami. Umami amplifies the savory characteristics in food, making meats taste meatier, broths taste more robust, and vegetables taste deeper and more satisfying. Consider MSG as a spotlight. It doesn't substitute flavor, but it intensifies what's already present. That's why a small amount of MSG in a soup or stir-fry can make it feel heartier without requiring extra salt or fat. Interestingly, research demonstrates that using MSG can actually decrease overall sodium levels in food since MSG itself contains only approximately one-third of the sodium found in regular table salt. So in moderation, it might actually assist people in reducing salt intake without compromising taste. What's particularly fascinating is that glutamate isn't just found in MSG. It's naturally abundant in foods that have been prized for centuries across different cultures. Parmesan cheese, for instance, contains extraordinarily high levels of natural glutamate, which is why it adds such depth to Italian dishes. Ripe tomatoes, especially when cooked down into sauces, concentrate their glutamate content significantly. Soy sauce, fish sauce, and fermented foods like miso all derive their savory complexity from naturally occurring glutamate. Even cured meats like prosciutto and aged beef develop higher glutamate levels through the aging process. This explains why traditional cuisines around the world, long before MSG was synthesized, instinctively combined ingredients high in natural glutamate to create deeply satisfying flavors. The umami taste isn't a modern invention or a chemical trick. It's a fundamental aspect of human taste perception that cultures have been enhancing through cooking techniques for thousands of years. If MSG is simply a flavor enhancer, why does it possess such a negative reputation? 
This traces back to the late 1960s when a letter was published in a medical journal describing something labeled Chinese Restaurant Syndrome. The author claimed that after consuming Chinese food, he experienced symptoms like numbness, headaches, and weakness, and he speculated that MSG was responsible. The media amplified the story, and soon MSG became public enemy number one. Restaurants began displaying signs stating no MSG to reassure patrons. But here's the issue. The letter wasn't based on controlled experiments, just anecdotal observation. And when researchers actually tested MSG under scientific conditions, the evidence linking it to those symptoms was weak at best. Fast forward to the present, and dozens of studies later, the verdict is considerably clearer. MSG is safe for most individuals. Regulatory bodies like the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the European Food Safety Authority, and the World Health Organization all classify MSG as safe to consume. Some individuals might be sensitive to very large doses of MSG taken on an empty stomach, which could cause mild short-term symptoms like headaches or flushing. But these effects are not common, and they don't occur at the levels typically found in food. For the vast majority of the population, MSG is no different than any other seasoning, acceptable in moderation and not a health hazard. It's also worth acknowledging that the fear of MSG had a cultural dimension, because the panic originated with the so-called Chinese restaurant syndrome, it unfairly targeted Chinese and other Asian cuisines. Many historians and food writers contend that racism and xenophobia contributed to amplifying the stigma. Meanwhile, MSG was being utilized extensively in American packaged foods, from potato chips to canned soups, without much objection. So part of MSG's negative reputation isn't just about science, it's about perception and cultural prejudice. In recent years, there's been a movement to reclaim MSG as a perfectly normal and delicious component of cooking, especially as people rediscover its role in authentic Asian recipes. So, now we return to the central question. Should you avoid MSG or should you use it liberally? The answer resides in balance. MSG isn't toxic, it isn't addictive, and it doesn't pose health risks for the average individual. But just like salt, sugar, or butter, it works best in moderation. If you cook at home and want to experiment with it, you'll discover that a small quantity can make a significant difference in soups, stir-fries, and marinades. If you're dining out, you probably don't even notice when MSG is in a dish, because it's already present in so many natural foods. Ultimately, MSG is not the villain it was once portrayed to be. It's simply another tool in the flavor arsenal. MSG has traveled a fascinating journey from a discovery in a Japanese laboratory to being vilified in Western countries, and finally to being re-accepted as a safe and useful ingredient. It's a reminder that sometimes our fears about food aren't based on solid science, but on misunderstandings, cultural bias, or outdated myths that simply never disappeared. At the end of the day, MSG is simply a method to bring out the savory depth of foods we already love. And if you've ever enjoyed a slice of pizza, a handful of chips, or a spoonful of tomato soup, chances are you've already been enjoying MSG without even realizing it. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you proper recognition for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other content. Thank you for joining us on this exploration through Stories Behind Everything. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories discovered through the smallest details.